Hello. Um, this is Amy again. Um, I just did most of the video and then I got interrupted by a phone call and I had to quit and I don't know how to splice videos together. So I'm gonna start over. Um, I am doing the video about carnivora and dementia, finally. I've been talking about it for weeks and I've been studying a little bit and um, I just wanted to finally get on here and talk about the carnivore diet and dementia. And back when I um, found the carnivore diet, I was already, uh, I was 64 years old when I started it. I had, I had heard about the carnivore diet um, back in 2010, but I wasn't ready. So 2018 is when I started and I was 64 years old. I'm 69 now. And um, one of the reasons I started it, I mean, the biggest reasons I started was I was hoping it was gonna really help me with my diabetes which it has, and I've been really pleased with my results. Um, but I also started because of my belief in the ability of the high-fat carnivore diet to help prevent dementia. So I knew, I knew a lot about dementia already because I had studied the ketogenic diet and I was just going on logic of why I thought it was going to help me stave off dementia. <clears throat> but when I started my YouTube channel, I kind of knew that I had to um, do a report. So I feel like I've been studying for a, you know, a presentation in school and I'm not quite ready, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, so I went on my Instagram and I asked a couple of people that I follow if they could give me, you know, some, a quote about, um, carnivore and dementia and then I started listening to YouTube videos about carnivore and dementia, and I gathered enough information to give you a report. But I think that you, I encourage you to still um, do your own research and do your own self-experimentation, especially if you already start if you already have symptoms of dementia i would start the carnivore diet the high fat carnivore diet today so, so i'm just saying that so <clears throat> let's see if i want to say anything else you know i've already done this once so i'm just thinking back of what i did say um well, when I started the carnivore diet, I knew I had already been on the ketogenic diet for eight years, <clears throat> and I had already studied it, and I already knew that there were a lot of benefits to being in ketosis. So when I started the carnivore diet, I did a high-fat carnivore diet because I wanted to. I wanted it to be a ketogenic diet, um, and so that I could enjoy the benefits of being in ketosis. And that's basically what I had asked. Do you want to come up here? Come on, come on, jump up, come on, come on, come on. Jasper always thinks he needs to be included when I'm talking on my phone. If I'm talking to anybody, more especially on a YouTube video or a, don't block me, or um, a Zoom call, he always wants to be on my lap. So we'll see how long this lasts. So the first person who gave me an answer to my question, hello, was um, from Instagram was Dr. Rachel Brown. And she is known as the carnivore shrink on um, Instagram. And she is a metabolic psychiatrist. And she's a great speaker. 
um, and very interesting. So if you, and she's got a great um, Instagram channel too. Um, so her, you know, she's often on being interviewed on, on YouTube, so she's fun to listen to. So this is her quote when I asked her about the connection between the carnivore diet and dementia. And I forgot to mention that Dr. Rachel Brown is a carnivore too. So here's what she said. <clears throat> the car um, carnivore is a subset of the ketogenic diet. There are many benefits to being in ketosis, including reduction in all in levels of inflammation and a reduction in levels of insulin. Alzheimer's disease populations are known to have high rates of prediabetes and type 2 diabetes, which is also known as end-stage insulin resistance. The brain can become insulin resistant and therefore unable to use glucose as fuel. Being in ketosis provides an alternative fuel source for the brain and a clean fuel source, which actually lowers inflammation, helping to improve cognitive symptoms and reduce inflammation in the brain. Then she goes on to say, 80% of people with Alzheimer's have insulin resistance. Lowering carbs means lowering high levels of insulin that ultimately result in insulin resistance over time. So that's what she said for me. And basically, um, you, can, you can test your ketones, uh, your blood ketones, but even if they're low, it doesn't mean if you're, if you're already eating a low-carb diet and a high fat, low carb diet, or zero carb diet, what you doing? Um, you are in ketosis. It may not show up on your meters, but that's only because your body is using the ketones. You still are in a state of ketosis. And that's what you wanna be if you wanna stave off dementia. So, since that was the only answer when I um, asked my questions of a few p people, but the doctors are too busy to answer. Most of the doctors are too busy to answer. Um, like a, what do they call those? DMs on in Instagram. But, let's see. Oh, I took some notes on a, so Dr. Anthony Chafee is a neurosurgeon. So I figured he probably had some answers about dementia since his you know, specialty is the brain and surgery on the brain. And um, just looking over my notes, um, he's got several um, YouTube videos about um, dementia. I just looked up, I went on YouTube, I looked up Dr. Anthony Chafee and dementia, and I got two big videos that came up. Uh, the first one was number one, dementia treatment, Anthony Chafee with Hal Craner. And um, so Hal Craner is, um, a man who has, um, what do they call it? Assisted living houses where he homes like six to 10 people in each house. And these are in the um, Phoenix area. And so he has seen firsthand some patients coming in with already with dementia and then, um, putting them on a carnivore diet because he believes in the carnivore diet and he eats that way himself. So he puts these people on a carnivore diet with their permission. They can come in with dementia and then they're put on the carnivore diet and then 
their dementia goes away and they are clear headed again. So that's like firsthand. It's like what you want to see if you're if this is what you're studying. And then the other video is is called excuse me is called preventing and treating dementia and living past 120. So those are both Anthony Chafee videos. And then Dr. Ken Berry, he also has several shorter videos about dementia. If you look at the, I always look at the date when I'm looking up stuff on YouTube because I want the latest. So the latest Ken Berry videos on dementia, he has several, but a lot of them are from five years ago, maybe before he was carnivore. So I look at the ones that's a year old because I know he'll be talking about the carnivore diet. And they were very helpful and gave a lot of information. I'm not gonna tell you about the videos. I think you should just go watch them. And then on one of Dr. Chafee's videos, he mentions a study that um, looks at whether statins cause dementia or not. So I looked at this because that's been like a pet theory of mine, but I'm not a scientist or a doctor or someone who can study studies. So, or, or if I, ne I don't even necessarily um, believe that studies work, you know? Um, because you can you can manipulate the data in a study. So, but there have been studies showing both. There's been several studies showing that there is no connection between dementia and statins. And then there's a newer study showing that there is definitely a link between statins and dementia. And for me, I kind of rely on logic. So what statins do is they cause your liver to not be able to produce cholesterol for your body. And I say for because all your cells, cells have cholesterol and your brain is basically made out of cholesterol. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but there's a large percentage of cholesterol in your brain. So if our body can't make it anymore, is that a good thing for our brain? Duh, no. So I've always thought, I mean, for years, you know, when, when statins were first in my brain and I started thinking about why people take them, I knew I didn't want to take them because I just figured logically that they would produce dementia. So that's all I'm gonna say. So I think that sometimes I, you know, I, so I'm 69, I don't have dementia. I have, a, my brain works a lot better on carnivore than off, but I was already ketogenic eight years before carnivore. So for the th last 13 years, I've been um, on a ketogenic diet, including the carnivore and the ketogenic. And I think that's, I've got, a, you know, a lot going for me, for my brain, and hopefully. Also, when I listen to testimonies about the carnivore diet, one of the first things that people say about the benefits of the carnivore diet is the lifting of brain fog I didn't have this because I was already not having brain fog because I was in ketosis. But a lot of people went straight from the standard American diet to the carnivore diet, and it really improved their thinking ability and their lifted their brain fog and they can think a lot better and all that kind of stuff. And I hear that every single day that I listen to um, podcast about the carnivore diet and the benefits and the improvements that people get on the carnivore diet. So, um, I'd like to say that this concludes my talk about dementia and the carnivore diet. 
Um, you just kind of have to look at the information logically and make your decision and then believe it. Like Car um, Abraham Hicks says, line up with your decision. Make your decision and then line up with it. And that's basically what I've done. I've just lined up with it and and that's it. So, um, I wanted to ask everybody if they've been doing their November 100. I feel like that I've I slacked off um, and I didn't realize that I was going to have a hard time, but <clears throat> the second anniversary of my husband's death was on uh, November 13th. So I've, I, even though I started the November 100, um, I took kind of a week off around the 13th and I'm back on it, and I did my 100 yesterday. So what the 100 is, and I did a video that, that I talked about this, but quickly, um, is Dr. Kilt started it. Um, he said, do something 100 times. You know, he's doing 100 push-ups. Um, some people are walking for 100 minute, minutes. Some people are doing other things. What I'm doing, or what I'm trying to do, and I didn't do until basically yesterday, was um, 100 push-ups, 100 V-ups, 100 squats, and 100 lunges. And I do these, I break them up during the day and do these 25 before breakfast, 25 for, before lunch, 25 before supper, and 25 before bed. So that adds up to my 100. So it's going okay. I just wanted to come clean about the fact that I had not done it every single day and starting back, you know, again. And I'll probably go past since I wanted to do it at least for 30 days. Um, I can't really take pictures. I wanted to take pictures um, like before and after but my husband used to take my pictures for me and my hands don't work to hold the phone in that funny way that you can do to take a picture. Um, so I have a hard time getting um, before and after pictures. You know, I don't know. So I, I tried, I got kind of some, I also have small mirrors in my new apartment. So we'll see, I'll try. Um, but, so it's been about 18 minutes, and I think that's long enough. And um, visit me on Instagram at Amy Fields Perrin, um, A I M E E F I E L D S P E R R I N. That's my name on Instagram and on Facebook. And um, ask me questions about carnivore. Um, and put comments in this YouTube video because I always answer my comments, um, ask me questions. I love to communicate and talk with everybody. It's great. Um, and then follow me on YouTube and um, sub subscri subscribe to my channel and like it so I get a bigger audience and I can get... Um, you know, more people and inform more people and just have more fun because that's what it's all about. Thank you.